In this video, I discuss the wood and adhesive being used for the keel. And then we look at the making of the forefoot, the stem, and the upper shaft log assemblies. Hi, I'm Bill England of the Ambler Odyssey's YouTube channel, where I am vlogging the build of a George Bueller designed 48 foot wooden troller yacht here in my Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Canada backyard boat shed. With the frames built, we are on to laminating the keel. When she is completed, we will sail the seven seas in search of adventure. One of the general rules of wooden boat building is to use wood that is grown locally. Here I am walking towards a pine grove that brackets the river just down from my home. As it was fall, the larch are the trees whose needles have turned yellow. They stand out against their green needled pine brethren. As used in the frames, I am using larch for all the keel timbers. Here on Prince Edward Island, larch is called juniper, even though proper juniper wood is different. Larch is also known as tamarack and hackamatack in different parts of North America. Larch grows in wet, boggy soils, so it has a built-in rot resistance, and hence why it has been used for boat building in many other Northern Hemisphere countries. I obtained my first batch of larch for both frames and keel timbers from a small mill nearby. Alwyn Sharp of Sharp's Construction put his wood miser to work cutting some large logs down to my rough cut timber sizes. Here you can see the sapwood, the lighter outer layers of the log. This softer wood is to be avoided, as the wood for boat building should come from the harder interior heartwood. With the larch now home, I stacked it according to size to continue drying. You can see I obtained my first order well before the boat shed was even completed. The family owned and operated Betts Mills out near West Point has been my go-to mill for the majority of my juniper, sorry larch, timbers. Timbers are cut to 12, 14, or 16 foot lengths at the mill. I bring my handy dandy cheat sheet for the lengths I need and cut them down to size on site to make transportation easier. The three sub-assemblies in this video are all rectangular in their final form, so a fairly easy process to mill and glue up the timbers. Each 2x10 rough cut timber had to be milled down to its final 1.5 by 9 inch size. With the forefoot measuring 9 inches in thickness, that means 6 layers of 1.5 inch laminated timbers were needed, and being nearly 16 feet in length, each layer was made up of timbers from 3 to 12 feet.
Milling down 10 and 12 foot lengths of timbers is a special kind of fun, especially when your jointer measures 6 inches in width. The cut width was set at 5 inches, and typically after each pass the timber would be flipped around so that the side outside the blades on the first pass would then be cut. Most of the time, this left a roughly equally cut 9 inch face. With one face of each timber now smooth, that smooth edge was lined up against the vertical back plate of the jointer so that an edge could be smoothed at a 90 degree angle. Next over on the table saw, the opposite edge was cut off at the intended 9 inch width. With one face smooth and both edges smooth and perpendicular to the smooth face, the final step was to run the remaining rough face through the planer, or as some like to call it, a thicknesser. The latter makes more sense since the timbers are being milled down to their final one and a half inch thickness. For the ballast keel and other sub-assemblies below the waterline, I am using a resorcinol formaldehyde resin and hardener adhesive called Cascofan. Cured resorcinol glue is completely resistant to fresh or salt water and is not affected by warm or cold temperatures, hence why it is a great product for laminated boat keels as well as aircraft laminating requirements. Hard to find in Canada, I was only able to source it through an aircraft company, Aircraft and Spruce Specialty Canada. Not only was it hard to find a supplier, but the supplier was having difficulty sourcing the product, so I had to order in small quantities at a time. And on my last order, I completely bought all product available in Canada and the US. Alright, so I'm making my biggest batch of resource and all yet. To cover uh, 12 feet so according to my handy dandy cheat sheet in the 5 to 1 ratio 260 grams of resin Ooh, getting pretty good at my pouring it's 261 Then 52 grams of the uh, hardener. Taking it up to the top. And now we mix. So just like uh, you know the West system epoxy, it's a five to one ratio of resin to hardener. 
for this specifically by weight, for an OS system it can be by volume or weight. Powdered hardener sure needs a lot more mixing. Once thoroughly mixed, the epoxy is poured onto the area of coverage and smoothed out to cover one of the surfaces being bonded. I would typically pour out about three quarters of the mixture, keeping some in reserve to apply to the remaining bare or thin spots. Resorcinol based resins require a high clamping pressure in order to achieve a good strong bond. So out come the clamps. clamp for the next timber, and the next timber, and the next timber, until the whole subassembly is all laminated up. Here, the prototype bottle screw clamp is put into action. I did not have much success with this clamp as I kept blowing out the bottom bolts. So when you think you need just one more pump, stop, don't do it.
the final timber of the sixth layer of the forefoot is now clamped in place. No C clamps here. Um, I needed to up my clamping game. So I got uh, what, two, four, six threaded rod clamps, four um, bar clamps, and my fancy dancy uh, bottle jack clamp. Need to do a bit of a mod on it because uh, maybe you'll see that those uprights uh, actually lean inwards so I got my uh, holes drilled in the wrong spot so yeah now the worker comes in inspects the job and exits stage center Next up is the three layer, four and a half inch thick upper shaft alley assembly. With temps below freezing, for some of the more manageable pieces, I moved into the house to work. final rectangular keel assembly is the stem. The stem is a big and beefy piece of keel. Ten and a half inches thick and ten feet long, it will be what plows aside the water as the boat moves forward. All the planking will attach to it, as well as the chine. And in a worst case scenario, it will take the brunt of anything the boat hits head on. By now, you should have figured out I am not showing the build of the keel assemblies in chronological order. In fact, the stem was the last one laminated together. This was purely for ease of video editing. So if you are wondering what the scaffolding is for in this clip, stay tuned. In a few episodes, all will be revealed. In fact, in about a month, the video should catch up to where I am currently in the build and so they will then become a chronological story.
So the stem knee and transom knee are finished, as are the deadwood, the forefoot stem, and upper shaft lock assembly. In the next video, the two large ballast keel assemblies are tackled. Thanks for joining me for this episode. For a front row seat on this do-it-yourself boat build project, please like, subscribe, and be notified on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to the Ambler Odysseys. Till next time, toodly-doo.